know, so I have a book out, you know, that's a little over a year now called The Thank You Economy and I continue to talk on that subject because businesses actually don't give a crap about customers so I need to kind of pound it through. Uh, I've been asked a lot about doing another book. I'm getting pounded from different directions. It's so weird that you asked me that just now. I've actually been under the mindset that I will not write another book for quite a while for the last 18 months, even before my last book came out. But it's starting to creep in. Uh, I'm starting to think that maybe there is something I want to talk about. Been thinking a lot about it lately and so, you know, I, I think we're marketing like it's 2002, even though it's 2012. And so I've been trying to figure out how to articulate that in book form because a lot of the people that are marketing in 2002 ways tend to be the people that read books. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's been running through my mind. Um, but what I'm most passionate about is that the world is changing as fast as we've ever seen. Uh, this is a printing press moment. And I think people are massively underestimating the culture shift we're living through. This is much, much bigger than we give credit to. Uh, the, the communication, the way we, we buy things, the way we think about things, the way we share things. We are morphing into a totally different animal uh, right in front of our eyes. And I think businesses and, uh, and individuals are underestimating the scope of what, a what I call a stream economy. You know, in a world where we're you know, consuming Pinterest and Tumblr and Facebook and Twitter, in a stream, look what I'm doing. I'm actually swiping my hand in a, I mean, in, my three-year-old daughter thinks that she can swipe everything because of an iPad. Culture shifts, massive, massive culture shifts and uh, billions, trillions of dollars in play and we're throwing a lot of our money in the garbage because we're marketing like it's O2. We think that people aren't DVRing. We think that people aren't looking at their phones instead of outdoor media. We think that people are interested in direct mail. Uh, we think a whole lot and we're not responding to the, what the data shows. You know, what keeps me up at night in real life is the health and well-being, you know, well, wellness of uh, the people I give a crap about. From a business standpoint, what keeps me up at night, I'm gonna give you a real authentic answer, is that I'm being as efficient with my time as possible given that I've been gifted with massively awesome business DNA, I feel a sense of responsibility. Like, you know, when I talk about wanting to buy the New York Jets, I'm not joking. Like, I feel like, you know, I feel like, I don't wanna be that athlete. If I was an athlete, I don't wanna be that six foot seven guy who can run as fast as the wind and gets drafted in the first round and then is a bust. You know, I feel like I've been gifted the business talent of a first round pick and if I, you know, sometimes you're a first round pick and you're a solid player. You have a good, good career, uh, but I wanna be a Hall of Famer. And so what keeps me up at night is like, you know what? The gray hairs are coming in, I'm 36, I'm not 24 anymore, I was pretty successful very young. Am I doing the things I need to be doing? Am I scaling? As a matter of fact, one of the biggest reasons I don't speak a whole lot anymore is sure, this pays incredibly well, I can't believe and thank you, you know, how well I get paid to come for an hour and speak, but it's a whole day and I'm not creating business or wealth in other places that are more scalable in return. And so I stay up at night a lot worrying, am I playing the chessboard properly given all the talent that I was given? Am I executing on the upside that I've been gifted with? And, and a lot of times the answer is no. And so um, I struggle with that. It's the sexiest thing. I think that uh, execution, I think execution is the sexiest thing in business. I think way too many people are romanced by the idea, uh, are romanced by you know, the buzz or the media or all these other variables. Execution is sexy. You know, I always say execution is, you know, there was that great uh, ESPN commercial that said chicks dig the long ball. You know, I always say, you know, chicks dig execution. You know, because executing a business is, um, <laughs> is essential. You can have the greatest idea of all time. I always say ideas are shit. Um, and that's not true, because ideas really drive the world, but ideas are really harmless and quite useless uh, without the execution behind them. I'm proud that in September, I decided to execute VaynerMedia, uh, the agency, even though client services wasn't the biggest thing that I wanted to do. And we've gone from 28 to 115 employees in seven months. I know how to execute. I took a $3 million liquor store to a $70 million company. That's execution. I've sold a lot of books. That's execution. A lot of more famous people than me have written books and haven't executed. So the execution part is where I find the sex appeal. What I can tell people is 
please respect it and understand that's the game. And understand that the best business people analyze you on that, not on how cool your logo is or how funny you are or, or how much m- media you get or how many users you have. It's about the execution of running a profitable business that has an EBITDA that allows you to you know, pay your bills, feed your family, and then you know, buy the little toys that we all like so much. I'm gonna give you a really interesting answer because it's so funny the sense of responsibility I feel when you say there's a lot of people in there and I'm gonna watch it. So instead of like giving some sort of fluff answer or something, this is a weird answer. First and foremost, figure out if you're in a position to win. If you work in a company that is too conservative or not, um, not rolling with the proper DNA to be able to execute and I'm not asking you to be a rogue. I'm asking you to be practical 2012. If you're not in an organization that allows you to execute that, you have no shot of succeeding. And you're gonna be, you know, kind of a, you're gonna be beaten down into a place where you then become like them. And so I would first say audit the playing field that you're playing on. And if you're a hockey player and you find yourself on a basketball court, you need to make a decision. Either you're gonna throw away your stick and start dribbling, or you're gonna go find a pond. And I think for a lot of you that are here, the fact that you came to hear these type of speakers and you came to this type of event, I highly recommend you think about going to a pond, number one. Then I start understanding and thinking about the next thing, which is I'm speaking right now to a camera and I can actually see my reflection through the little uh, mirror type glass that this camera's using. And I would ask you to do the same thing. Look yourself in the mirror and really stop lying to yourself. I think we all do it. You know that answer I just gave earlier about you know what keeps me up at night? I'm wondering if I'm lying to myself. I wonder if like me caring too much about people and wanting to engage one-on-one is gonna keep me from the biggest heights of my career because I can't scale it and time's running out on me. And that's okay with me because that's who I am. I highly recommend that you think about being who you are. Maybe you're not the best marketer when it comes to big ideas, but you're a great grinder. Maybe you're an offensive lineman, not a quarterback. Maybe you're the head coach and not a player. Look at me, in sixth grade I realized I was more likely to own a team instead of playing for one. Don't lie to yourself. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and bet all of it, your entire career and livelihood, on your strengths. Work on your weaknesses. Um, I, I, you know, work on your spelling, Gary. Work on your, uh, you should wear a suit to a meeting. Uh, anything that isn't authentic to who you are as a human being is bad business advice if you are in control. See, I've always been an entrepreneur in control. I've always owned or been part of a family business, so I'm in control. So that's advice for me. Obviously, if you work for somebody and they want you to wear a suit and tie, either you do or you don't work there. What I, back to my last analogy of finding a place to play, Anything that makes you deviate from what you're comfortable in doing by yourself on a Saturday afternoon with your friends in business is something that's going to hurt you. You're gonna be molding into something you're not. The authenticity of the relationship and the energy in the room with the client or the prospective client is gonna deflate because it's not truly you. I get away with murder. I'm about to go on this stage and curse my fucking face off and everybody's gonna clap. You know why? It's not forced. It's who I am and authenticity trumps anything you do. Except if you're like an authentic murderer, that's not good, but you know what I mean. So the worst piece of advice I've ever been given, and I've been given it in various forms throughout my entire career, career, is to conform into something that is more comfortable to that person's filter. In my filter, if you come to my office in a suit and tie and a resume, I'm less interested in you. I want a story tell. I want to know what makes you tick. Are you driven by money? Because that's good, I'll just give you more of that and you'll be a great employee. Are you driven by legacy? Fine, let's work on projects where you can become micro famous. Are you driven by time to like do yoga and play sports? Good, I'll give you a nine to five type job. Put players in a position to succeed is how I win in business. You trying to not put your own self into positions of success are, is a huge mistake and so I would think about that heavily. I'm very comfortable in what I call controlled chaos. So I don't have a routine. My routine is my mentality. You know, 
my mentality is to be thankful. You know, you got to see something off camera, that's real, like I am thankful. It's not about working out or, or about, you know, reading something in the morning or, you know, calling this person or yoga or meditation. I don't have anything like that. I just wake up in the morning, recognize what I have to do that day, thankful that I'm in control of it. I may not be happy what I'm doing that day, but it was my own fucking fault. You know, I scheduled that meeting. I tried to bite off more than I could chew. I'm in full control and I'm grateful for that. And so my regimen is really a 360, uh, you know, 24-7, 365 day mentality of, holy crap, am I lucky. I have a wonderful family. Everybody that I care about is healthy. Um, And you know, to complain about work, I know how to make money. That's been a skill I've always had. So it's only about how much. And so I'm just happy. And so that's, I just keep things in perspective. I get down, you know, Vayner's growing very fast. We have headaches. Uh, Client services is a bitch. Um, But very quickly I kind of like put myself back into check and say, wait a minute, everything's awesome. You know, I'm more of an art of marketing guy. I'm more EQ than IQ. I I think the art of marketing and the way I think about it is who's got the pulse of society? To me, that's why I'm so relevant, in at least in my own mind, and like to think at some level why people pay attention to me and follow me. I have a really good pulse sensor. I'm really quick to innovate. Uh, I really don't get romantic or emotional about any tactic or platform or moment in marketing time. You know, I didn't grow up techie. I didn't have a computer until I was 20. And here I am, a thinker and leader in digital marketing. You know, it's not in my DNA. I'm not a gadgety kind of guy. I don't care about that iPad or my phone or your laptop or this camera flip. I don't like this stuff. I don't like the trinkets. I like the psychology of why people buy shit. And I always challenge myself to watch human beings live their lives and try to decide what's shifting in the lexicon. Why are 13 year olds acting that way? What is that 60 year old doing by acting like he's a 40 year old today? And the generation before him, his 60 year old dad acted like an 80 year old. What is all going on? Why are our eyeballs and our attention shifting to places they've never been before? On demand, Hulu, Roku, Netflix, our phones, deal the day check-in, virtual currency, augmented reality, holograms, where's this all going? What happens in a world where paint is smart and can change color and market? What happens where we trust each other more than we trust banner ads and living in a social world, does the word of mouth scale? What happens when we stop throwing $3 million at a TV commercial and spend $3 million on people to execute with every person that ever mentions our brand online at scale? What happens? I'm always asking what happens and I'm always trying to do it as early as possible so I can taste it and because I'm a businessman at heart, I look at it from a business filter, not a romantic technology filter and then that allows me to say, aha, something's happening here and then I go all in and then all of a sudden I'm a market leader and thinker and eventually goes that way. I've been able to win that game over and over and I'll always be able to win that game and that's why I fully believe that I'll be able to accomplish what I want in life because when you have the sensibility, the pulse, of the world right now, but to most marketers, is the world three years from now, you can win consistently.